All right, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. Sorry it's been a little while since we've done a video. Uh, we are in the middle of our season. Uh, two games in, preseason game in, so three games in, a lot going on, uh, def especially uh, during the time of year that it is right now, trying to control uh, school and your team and, and still dealing with pandemic issues and things like that. So uh, junior high games, JV games, just a lot of stuff going on, so I'm sorry I couldn't get uh, any videos out in the past couple weeks. Make sure you check out some of our partners. Dome Hats, the headwear sponsor we use, Baker Sporting Goods, company we use for our uh, our uniforms and our spirit packs and our coaches gear, fans gear, Just Play Football, which is digital software taking your program to the next level, the best play drawing tool on the market, has unique features like uh, quizzes and, and uh, game plan things. You can quiz your players on, on game plans and playbooks so you can find out how much they know about your offense or your defense. Game Strat sideline replay system we use if you're looking for a highly reliable, highly reliable, uh, affordable sideline replay system. Make sure you check out Game Strike. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. Get thousands of reps without needing a partner. High and tight ball security training aid. You have to hold the ball with the proper points of pressure, wrist above the elbow, in order to hear the ball beep. If you do not hear the beep, you are holding the ball incorrectly. And then Stand Perfect, which is a training aid for younger players that teach them how to get in consistent and reliable stances. You put the Stand Perfects right on the ground where you want them. Heel, toe, stagger, right heel. Uh, left toe or, or left toe, right heel, whatever it may be. Save all the buzzwords, eliminate moving feet around, put them down on the ground. This is where I want you to stand. Get your players in nose and get more reps. All right, so today we're going to talk about a little bit about playing what your kids can play. I get a lot of comments when I do these videos, and sometimes people will talk and say, hey, that video is a little bit confusing. I think you try and do too much with your kids. And I think sometimes people need to understand that I'm doing educational videos based on topics that I think people want to hear about and topics that people have asked me about. That doesn't necessarily mean that every time I do a video, what you see on the video is what we actually do week in and week out. It's actually quite the opposite of that. A lot of times when I am doing videos, there's a lot of things in the videos that we just can't do uh, depending on the coaching staff that I have, the players that I have, how old they are, uh, how long they played football, where they're coming from before they got to me. All right, so. Most of you that know, that, that have been watching this channel for a while, <coughs> excuse me, uh, know that we like to play split field coverages. You know that we like to play kind of very much straight off the cuff of what TCU would be doing. We like to play check with me defense based on formations. We like to play two read. We like to play three by one quarters adjustments. We like to be a quarters based team. But that doesn't mean that that's necessarily who you are every year and what you plan to be. So in our first game, we started out and we tried to play and even – Eight-man front, we tried to keep the coverages real simple um, so that we could get our run fits. We played a, uh, a team that was 8A, we're 5A, very good offensive line, very good tailbacks, and they were running power counter cap schemes. So we set up everything. We only played one coverage that night, um, and we had one or two line stunts, and then we had uh, two different fronts to try and play, and then we had uh, two blitzes that we were going to try and use. And they ran the ball up and down the field on us for over 500 yards. It was one of the most embarrassing nights of my life. They ended up beating us 42 to 21. All right, and that was just trying to play two even fronts, trying to get the ball sent in eight-man fronts, trying to get the ball sent to the weak safety in the nickel, trying to get the linebackers to understand how to fit off of the way we were playing the even front stuff. And we just couldn't do it. I've had all new linebackers. Uh, I've, I lost five coaches last year at the end of last year. Uh, filled in some coaches late, so a lot of the coaches that I have uh, are new guys. They're new to coaching football. They're new to coaching certain positions. I've been uh, kind of running around between linebackers, safeties, and different spots, so I couldn't get the linebackers taught. I couldn't get them coached up. I couldn't get them to read keys. I couldn't get them to run with pullers. I couldn't get them to spill pullers. I couldn't get them to send the ball to the free hitter. So nothing we did on defense worked. So we came back the following week, and I said, look, I'm not going to sit here and – make our kids play the things that I want to play because I know this is how I want to play or I know that this is an effective way to play football. I'm going to sit back and analyze the kids we have that have some talent, what is it that they do well? And the thing that we found out is our kids blitz fairly well and they play man-to-man -man, or at least they read keys when they're playing man-to-man -man fairly well. So, <clears throat> you know, we started, we started out last week trying to play over front. We tried to play eight-man fronts, we tried to get the ball sent to the nickel and the weak safety, and we just couldn't do it. We were getting power counter. We weren't spilling. All right, first first play of the game, team ran power. We don't spill. So 
They, they run power, they double here, they block that back, they kick, we don't spill, our end stays outside, our mic goes to fit outside because he thinks we're going to spill, all right, guard wraps up in there, my will shoots backside in this B gap and they go power, my fold in players both miss the tackle right there, my corner misses a tackle late, it goes 95 yards on the first play of the game for a touchdown on power which we worked against all week long, fitting the power play, fitting the power play, fitting the power play. So what we did this past week was we said, okay, look, we're going to go back to our 3-3 sack stuff, and we're going to play a little bit more aggressive, and we're going to send five a bunch, and we're going to play some <coughs> three under three deep, and then we're going to play some man stuff, and we're going to really work hard on the man players, all right, fitting and getting extra hats to the run game, because when you're blitzing now, all right, so when you're blitzing, what you got to understand is you're not necessarily getting extra hats all the time, all right, in the run game, unless you use your players correctly. So we played this past week, we played a bunch of one free, all right, and we just switched it. We brought, we left the ends of the C gap and we boxed and we brought our stack linebackers in the B gap and we moved the nose one side or the other, all right. We then played our mic and our whatever safety didn't have a two, we played them bracket man to man on the two backs. Now what we've got is, now we've got a seven-man box, okay, and then we have a free safety that is extra to kind of clean some things up. So if they're two back, they have six blockers as long as the, as long as the tailback is a ball carrier. So just because you're blitzing, that doesn't mean you're going to get extra hats. It just means your kids are going to be a little bit more aggressive playing their gaps. So our linebackers, rather than reading keys, our linebackers were a little bit better getting downhill and blitzing. So we had them blitz the big gap first. Okay, and then we moved the nose, and then we had the ends outside. The ends were box players. We didn't spill. We couldn't spill anything the week before. Why well, try and spill again? All right, so we boxed. And then we had the two interior guys say, all right, listen, if you're going to get power now, okay, and now they're going to have to block down on the B-gap blitz. They're going to try and double the nose, all right, and maybe get back somewhere, all right, if they get back to maybe one of the man players or if they hinge the B-gap on the blitz because we got the B-gap blitz coming. Guard's going to pull, so the fullback's going to kick that spill. Okay, so we need to make sure that the two extra players that are playing man-to-man -man on the two backs are getting involved so that we can get seven on six. Just blitzing, just saying, hey, we're going to pressure, we're going to play, you know, either this or the antithesis of that or the similarity to that is bare front. <coughs> and you see throughout the course of high school football, especially when you watch these games on ESPN, See a lot of teams that line up and play bare front. Well, there's a couple reasons. Number one, all right, when you're playing bare front stuff, you are eliciting a lot of one-on-one -on -one blocks. You're forcing people at the line of scrimmage to block one-on-one. -on -one. So now when you get these teams that want to be gapped, all right, and they want to run power, they probably have to block down on the three, down on the one, back on the three, because when they go to pull the guard or the tackle, depending on how they do it, they may leave the guard on and pull the tackle. When they go to do that, they have to account for the three on the back side. All right, so when they account for the three on the back side, what ends up happening is a lot of times you'll get pack blocks from the center so that they can kick there and wrap there. Well, when you play that structure and you force all those one-on-one -on -one blocks, number one, you're forcing one-on-one -on -one blocks that you're hoping some of your kids can win. You're eliminating double teams, so your kids, we aren't as uh, very big on defense. We're about 200 pounds up front, about 180 pounds at the nose. We want to eliminate as many double teams as possible. So when we do that, we eliminate double teams. We get all these solo blocks, and now we've eliminated double teams. And what we've also done is we've freed up one of our man players, because if they have to go back on all that, all right, unless they can slip that tackle up the field, they're going to kick all right, now they're going to kick our box player that's blitzing off the edge. Now when this guard pulls, he's going to get a man player there, and there's your second man player there, and now we've got an extra box. So we're playing seven on six in the box, all right, instead of six on six in the box and then trying to spill the ball to the seventh and eighth player, we're playing seven on six, and we're trying to box the ball and keep it inside because our players do a better job, all right, of playing that way. Then the next thing we did was we went... All right, in the same similar structure from the bare front, all right, we added the mic to the pressure. Okay, so we added the mic to the pressure and we went from bare to what we call grizzly. All right, we made it real easy. We said, hey, when we go bare, it's lion, mic, 
Ram, all right, there's your mic there. There's your five men. When we go Grizzly, you guys are going to do the same thing, all right, except we're going to add the mic into the pressure, and now we're going to send six, which now means I need the free safety and the, and the whatever safety doesn't have a number two. <coughs> I need the free safety and that safety to bracket. So I need these two. I'm sending six. They have six blockers. They have seven if they want to use the tailback. I have eight guys in the box, all right? I should be able to outnumber everything they do in the box if everybody wins, all right, in their gap or everybody holds their gap and takes on a block. Even if the quarterback runs the ball, they have seven blockers. I have eight defenders. The key is teaching your man players in the run game how to show up and then in the pass game, all right, how to show up so that if they have six or seven guys in protection and you blitz and you send six, okay, and they keep seven guys in protection, you're not really doing yourself any favors with the blitz. You're not going to get home. It's seven on six. So you've got to teach your man players how to add on and become extra, all right, so that now when you rush six and they block seven and eight, you're seven and eight go, and now you try to get, or I'm sorry, they, they block six and seven, so they have five linemen, they're six, they're seven. You blitz six, these two stay in, it's seven on six offense. You add your two man players to the mix and blitz the back and make sure you don't get screens. So you aggressively blitz your back. Now it's going to become eight on seven and you might be able to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands. So we decided that we wanted to go to a system that was a little bit simpler for our kids to play. All right, we had a new coaching staff. We had some new linebackers, some new safeties, struggling with reads, struggling with where their eyes go. So we just said, hey, if, we be, if we're a little bit more aggressive, and we play more one high stuff, and we send five, and we play three under three deep. Okay, one of the other things we did was we just went with a simple, all right, field side pressure, three under three deep. Okay, so what we did was from the field side, we played a team that liked to sprint out, so we felt like if we could take away sprint out from the field side, So what we did was we sent our defensive line away from the pressure. All right, we sent the ram up off the edge tight. We sent the right safety wide off the edge. We dropped the free safety down. <laughs> Excuse me. We dropped the free safety down. He was two seam. The mic was three hole. The line was two seam. And then we took the backside safety and we spun to the middle and we played 3D. All right, so we played single high man free and then we played single high three under three deep. And we sent five probably 65% of the night. Now, is that something that I like to do? No. Is that something that uh, is how I want to coach defense? No. But the week before, we're coming off a game where we give up 42 points and 500 yards rushing. Why would you sit there and do the same things? As a coach, you got to figure out what your kids do well, and you got to figure out how to put your kids in a position to win. So never forget, as a coach, your job is each week to analyze your personnel Find the best talent to put on the field. Figure out what that talent does well, all right, and get those guys to understand what they need to do to play good football. Keep them aggressive. Keep them running around trying to play fast, all right? I appreciate everything you guys do for Play Fast Football. If you're in your season, stay safe. Hopefully you guys are doing everything you need to do to get your season done. If it hasn't started yet, it's going to kick off this week. Good luck to you. If it's starting already, hopefully you've won some games. If you haven't won some games, hopefully you bounce back and everybody stays healthy. I appreciate everything you do. For Play Fast, make sure you turn on uh, your notifications. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, when your notification's on, you'll know every time I do a live video or every time a video comes out. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you don't like uh, the topics. Leave a comment. Every comment that I see, I try and respond back to. All right, so just, uh, just keep in mind, guys, just because I'm doing videos on certain topics doesn't mean that I run all those things with uh, my team. I am doing instructional videos to try and help people. There's times where I don't run 80% of the things I talk about in the video. So just because you see it on YouTube doesn't mean that we're trying to run that stuff every week or every game. All right, so remember, guys, you won't play well until you play fast. Thanks for everything you do for me, and I will catch you guys next time.